Welcome back, disc golfers, to the 25th anniversary Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova. This is now an A tier event, same old Wild Horse golf course. We are at the Millennium Course, previously the factory store. And fun fact, this used to be called the Gentleman's Challenge back in the day, going into that 25th anniversary. My name is Chris German. We have Derek Skoll, co founders and co owners, bringing you the action on this back nine. A very fun card. Dan and Burr, bogey free, five down. Ricky Wysocki took that bogey near the end. Calvin, couple bounce backs. Nate Sexton has one there as well. Steric, we take a look. Kevin Kiefer, you mentioned Emerson Keith, new end of a player, nine down as well. We also see Bradley Williams in the mix at top five also. Good to see us. We're going to move into hole 10, par 3, 388 feet. Used to play over near the water, kind of close to where hole 9's basket is, but they pushed it over to the property line, changed up the shot. Basically just a nice straight throw whatever you want here. So Nate's going to go with his forehand. Yeah, forcing it over to the left. As it hooks up there at the end, nestles into the circle. Great shot. Yeah, OB pretty close to the green on this one. You can very easily find it there, kind of right over to the left or to the right. Hard to gauge the wind from the tee here comparatively to what is uh, in the fairway and green. Yeah, this is going to be a little early left from Gannon. It's in that circle two range. Tough, though, with that OB. Pretty close behind the basket if you get a roll away. Roller coaster round for Calvin so far. As this back nine to right the ship. A little wider there. I think that might do it. Puts him right on the edge of circle, about 25 feet. Rick throwing a left to right oh, shot. Oh, man. Well, and that completely stopped the flight. Realistically, par at best here for Rick. Awkward distance oh, as well, and that needs sit to down. sit. Oh, no. Like I said, that comes up quick. Interesting to see if Gannon is going to run this putt. It's right at that point where you know you should make it. Oh. Give it a good chance. He does find metal. That's all you ask for. Yeah, and the, re the reaction was still localized. A couple steps inward for Calvin. Gets a little bit of shade from this Vegas sun. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we here at Gatekeeper have kind of been seeing a little bit of everything. We got the cold weather in Sweden. We got the rainy weather in Pennsylvania. And now we are in the dry desert of Las Vegas. Good putt for Calvin getting his birdie to start this back nine. Yeah, we, uh, we haven't played this tournament at this time of year in quite some time uh being part of the tour stops for many years it was always late february this is the first time having it all the way in may yeah i mean the first year we covered lvc was the 20th anniversary and we got snow on the first day wild to think different times solid birdie for nate trying to keep pace with the boys Rick, a couple blemishes here in the middle of this round. This for bogey. Oh, 
I'm sure he's frustrated there. It's the type of course, though, you just gotta keep chugging along because come final day, you never know. All right, here we are, hole 11, 635 foot, par four, OB all along the right side, OB green here before we get to the actual green, and a lot of mounds, a lot of trees, and a drop off behind. Yeah, this hole's gone through some variations over the years. Basket used to be a lot closer right behind that green Similar shots to kind of hole five. But they pushed this basket back, put it there on that hillside, and I think it plays as a much better par four. That's got a great amount of turn on it. Getting the full flight here. Getting oh, graced yeah. with a skip. And right in the middle of C2. Yeah. Absolute crush. Gannon going with a similar shot here. It's going to fade out a little earlier. <laughs> but, but still, still in the same neighborhood. <laughs> I would expect Rick to try the same thing. It looks like maybe he didn't get over on it quite enough, so it didn't get the turn he needed. Still pushing forward in a good spot. Nate breaking this hole down is what our oh, yeah. <laughs> mortal folks would do. <laughs> Just lay up near that green and then you got a nice little approach where these guys jump putting. Yeah, definitely uh, not trying to run it <laughs> with how dangerous it is there on the mound. Uh, one of the easiest birdies these guys are going to have all day. This whole 11 came 0.11, so 11 under par. <laughs> <laughs> I keep having all these numbers line up today. I, maybe I need to go hit, hit one of the casinos later. I was going to say play the lottery, but they don't allow that here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'll find other ways to lose my wages. It's Nate found his wages getting a turkey. <laughs> Easy diamond for these uh, crew there. So we're going to move into hole 12, 1,000 foot, par 5. This one, they used to have the tee box kind of right off the actual tee from the golf course. Uh, they pushed it over to the right a little bit. You have OB to contend on the left with the path, but I mean, this hole, there's a lot of eagles in play here. These guys have no problem reaching. So Nate going with the more traditional route. I think you're going to find a lot of the righty players playing. Um, you know, if they're if they're playing conservatively, they're going to go forehand. But the people with the big arm are going to try to chew off a lot more off that corner, forcing a turnover. Could see some rollers on your second shot, which will get you down for a long bid for eagle. So as you can see here, Gannon is really trying to bite off a lot more of it. And as yeah, you can see, what? quite a lot of carry. 500. Five, yeah, jeez. So he, he, he broke this down in two parts. Yeah. Cut it in half. Yeah, it's two 500-foot shots, no problem. And so I did overhear Rick was practicing the forehand a lot, but it looks like maybe he got inspired from some of the other card mates, and it looks like that works out perfectly. Oh, that scooted up real nice. Yeah, going to leave himself plenty to the left to give him a better look into the green. Another stock forehand from Nate. The second shot, you can end up. Oh, all right. Nice little roll forward, too. Early right. You definitely want to miss that. Keep the trees basically out of your mind altogether. You have all this room to the left for the second shot. Oh, 
yeah, matched the angle of the hillside perfectly. Slides past that tree, giving himself an opening. Yeah, about a hundo from the basket. Jeez. <laughs> Cut that in half. <laughs> 50 from the basket. Truly broke this down into two. Big roller. roller. I'm so happy Rick threw the roller. Been filming him years here. Curling up. And great. Always throws the Going roller. up the hillside there, nestling at the top. Oh. Easy. That is so worth another wow. look. Easy three for Rick here. Yeah, that is. Wow, what a shot. Shot of the day so far. Tap in eagle. And that should be fine for Nate. He's got about a circle's edge look for his birdie. Ooh. Good bid from Calvin. Slight right to left here for Gannon. Get a little more aggressive with this putt being down here. He does. That's two eagles for the card, barring anything crazy from Ricky's tap in there. But awesome to see. Taking some strokes from the field too. Circle's edge putt for Nate. You know it out of the hand, a little low. Hate to see it just by how routinely he dissected the hole up until then. So to not capitalize on the birdie is a shame. Calvin finding a bird as well, but not the eagle. Taking home three with the turkey, but Rick, that is one heck of a shot, bud. All right, coming back in, hole 13. Lucky 13, 363 foot par three. Hazard in the bunker in front. OB all around, slightly uphill. Big hyzers all around for the righties. Just like that. Good shot from Gannon. This hole has been a staple over the years, hasn't changed. And has always posed a pretty tough shot. A lot of undulation there near the green as well, so you have an opportunity to kind of play into the bowl. So going wider and letting that bowl catch the disc. It seems like each <laughs> we're getting progressively wider and wider on these drives as we work through the card. Scooting his own yeah. up there. Love oh, it. look at that roll all the way to the other side of the hill. So now that is probably not the side that you would ideally like to be because if you miss your putt, you have the hazard right there behind. Calvin finding the top of the basket. No luck for his birdie is Rick right on the edge of circle. Oh, yeah. Good putt from him. Looking at seven down now. After that bogey, he has turned it on. Oof. 
headwind lift there a little bit for Nate. Yeah, like you said, that side of the hill is not the favorable side, so the Disc Golf Universe did not like that one. Again, in about the same distance, but other side of the hill gets his birdie. Matching Rick. Birdie, eagle, birdie. What a show. Yeah. Four down through three. So we still do have a couple tricky holes coming up. Uh, so it's not smooth sailing here at the Millennium Course. 14 is one of those. Par 3, 465 feet. Got a low ceiling of guardian trees down by the green here, as well as a ball golf green that plays OB. Path on the right. That OB to the left comes into play. A lot of people can bail out to the right if they don't want to get aggressive. And so the Gannons seem to be throwing an overstable approach um, with a tailwind. So I think that might be why we just kind of came up a little short. Oh, Slow that's... down. Oh, oh, man. I don't think you could get any closer to the boundary. Dang. That's got to be a millimeter. From being in bounds. This shot looks beautiful. Sneaking up under the tree. And it gets flirting OB as well. Yeah, this is definitely the aggressive line. Full flight, too. With the caliber of play we have on this card. It's good wow. to see someone execute it. Calvin gonna try to get his birdie. That looks like they got caught up by that bush there, but shouldn't be Ooh. any problem for Nate. That was a little scary. I think timing timing looked a little off there. Textbook from Gannon should be able to get his par, and that is tough luck for Rick. Oh, yeah. Calvin, one of four birdies on the day. Shout out to Hayden Schultz, Jake Hebenheimer, and Julian Celius. The birdies as well. 14 is one heck of a birdie to get. I feel like over the years, probably on count on one hand, how many times we've seen birdies here. Yeah, and in the previous few years, I mean, we play this course more now, where it used to be just once. Yeah. All right, hole 15. Change up here on the Millennium Course. 427 foot par three. As you can see, the pin has been pushed back into its own little section. A lot of guardian trees there. Really, it is a three part hole. Um, your landing zone is going to be where the basket used to be, about, uh, I don't know, 60 feet shorter. Um, but as you can see, Calvin has no problem lacing it wow. into bullseye. What a shot. This is a pretty tough hole. I mean, this, this change, it punishes you if you do not hit that perfect shot. Yeah, and a lot of... A lot of uh, out of bounds to worry about here more now too yeah even with that layup from ganon i mean if you just push that a little too long there's ob where the rocks are so not just the path that you're worried about but it's it's distance as well so you have to be accurate and throw the disc at the perfect speed and it's downhill this very oh, very tough hole man and this is no gimme for nate yeah, patent pending, hyzer shot, getting caught up in the palms, dropping oh, just no. straight down, not making it into the green. 
Oh boy. That's Gannon. Great shot from Gannon. Yeah. Spike Heiser with the forehand right in. Uh, Rick tagging metal, trying to save his par. Damn it. Mm. Tough break for Nate there. Their string of a couple pars. This is where Calvin, the lone birdie on the card. This came in 0.79 over par. So by far the hardest hole on the course all day. There were 10 birdies, so there were people getting their birdies, but the amount of double bogeys that we saw. Hard pill to swallow. Stretch for round one, hole 16, par four, last par four on the course actually, 693 feet, 211 meters. We do have this golf green, you have to contend, then we have a basket. Kind of the theme of the course here, pitched on the hillside. It's got a lot of carry on it. Big crush. Wow. What? Uh oh making the catch cam spin that is gonna be a pretty easy approach there for Calvin there is OB on the left you have to worry about as well if you fade out a little early but these guys again and hitting the more traditional landing zone <laughs> yeah and even that it's a, it's a pretty big crush Got a sharp angle coming out of the hand for Rick, so a little low too, not giving it quite enough to push further to the left, but a crush nonetheless. Yeah, a lot of distance, and that's we've seen that from players in the past where they just kind of turn it a little too much, but if it just lands at the perfect angle, it slides up another 150 feet. So this looks like a, yep, so it's a decent roll. Thought I was going to get him some flat footing. But still an extremely workable position. Yeah, Not great really anything shot to worry from about. Nate. Puts himself inside the circle right over the OB. Just another example of speed, distance, and angle controls. Oh. Okay, yeah. Coming up short here for Calvin. Luckily keeps it safe. Have his putt for birdie. And Gannon's gonna be putting over there with Rick. So everyone inside the circle. I'd say this is probably right on the <laughs> or, edge. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're about. Basically a circle putt for Calvin, though. Oh, yeah. Check another box. That's another green. So let's take another look here. Slow it down. Solid connection right there in the middle. About a 40-footer. Rewind ever. And you can hear Nate there in the background saying good catch. So he wasn't very happy with that putting stroke, but able to walk away with the green nonetheless. We're just a couple close putts away from another diamond. Oh, man. Oh, did I? Yeah, you jinxed Damn, it, bud. I didn't, I didn't know that. Rick coming in hot, hitting like what looked like the inside top of where the band is. 
And the basket wasn't having any of that. All right, I'm going to retire until we're on the next hole, so I'll see you then. <laughs> All right, I'll take it from here and bring us into hole 17, triple mando right out of the gate, 322 foot par three. Reminds me a lot of um, like just, this is, this is what I think of when I think of West Coast golf. Uh, you got a rock wall there, so if you play short, you could get stopped up. Still stabbable from there, but you want to throw a forehand um, off into that middle, slightly right gap, forcing a flex. And like I said, Calvin kind of clipping that stone wall. Didn't matter though, ramped over into it, finding himself in the circle. It's a good change of pace after throwing a big crush on 16. And where that is pretty much textbook. It's exactly how you want to draw up the hole. Yeah, the flex forehand, definitely the play if you got it. A uh, little clipping a little bit of the foliage there. Surprisingly taking a lot out of it, leaving him short. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good shot from Rick is Nate going to just try to spin one in. He's looking at a par. And it is attackable if you're short. Not too much to worry about. Oh, no. One of the worst sounds in disc golf. Calvin's similar distance to Rick. Step or two closer. Going with the full routine here, not taking anything for granted. Nice, yeah, Calvin dialed in. Filling up that scorecard. A little bit of turbulence in the beginning of the round, but he's leveled out good here. In the double digits. Footing a little different than just the foot ahead for Gannon. Taking a couple steps, checking the wind. You can't really tell by the flag. But we do have a headwind here. A little right to the left. Gets his birdie as well. Now at 11. So this came in a quarter stroke over par. So this triple mando and this technical shot really hung some people up. And I, will, I would like to call out that Gannon is currently tied with the course record. Previously held or currently held by Eagle. And that was set in 2021. Wow. Hole 18 to finish it out, 392 feet. Another green just right before that basket. Theme of the course, good way to finish it out right at the clubhouse is this gap. Yeah, you're going to see a lot tricky. of people playing that right side. Oh, stays in. Didn't even talk about the bunker over there that comes into play as well if you leak a little early left. Nice shot. Gannon doing it right. It's one put away from uh, beating that course record. Neat hucking a forehand all the way up there. Yeah, I think that's a lot lower than he was hoping for, but the ground play on that with that Vegas grass helped him out quite a bit. Rick taking that right side that you were talking about. Sneaks just past the green. One last big putt to finish out his round. Oh. <laughs> he was like, wait, you're talking about Rick? You're talking about me. Yeah, a little, a little <laughs> short, but it doesn't even matter. I'd say Nate's got the record for our uh, highlights on round one. Yeah. Yeah. Solid putt, too. A lot of too. putting distance. I mean, he's probably close to 200. 
feet and putts at least <laughs> just on like the re- just on like the replays and stuff not even like his standard 20 footers the screen does really set up for a lot of really good spectating as well it is on thursday for this round oh, calvin going a little too high there with that uphill putt. Um, but I do expect that uh, for our day three of competition, we will see a lot more people packed behind there as we see Ricky slam the birdie there, finishing at six. Yeah, Ricky, some couple, couple, ah, couple tough holes. Gannon finishing out with the 12 under, 1086 rated. And course record holder. Course record. No slight of Calvin, 10 under, enough to put him on lead card. So we take one last look. Gannon, bogey free with the Eagle. Calvin, amazing back nine. Ricky and Nate, a couple blemishes couple hiccups here or there is that's going to finish it up so we have a great round two card with isaac robinson making it and then nick newton which is a new face to our coverage yeah that's so exciting, exciting to showcase some other players and as we finish up here i do want to say thank you to all of our patreon supporters uh you make this all possible so we really appreciate it and we appreciate all of you viewers thanks for tuning in and catch us on round two See you at then. the end of a course <laughs>